Does the flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil set off a tornado in Texas? This is the famous question posed by mathematician Edward Lawrence in 1972, with the idea that a small change such as the flaps of a butterfly's wings can cascade into a larger effect. Unsurprisingly, this is called the butterfly effect. I would like to pose a different question. If pollinators went extinct, would you miss chocolate? How about apples, raspberries and strawberries? Or tea and coffee? We need to talk about pollination, because not only will the disappearance of pollinators reshape ecological communities, but it will also reshape the rest of the world we live in, starting with your local restaurant's menu. And here's why. Pollination is the process of moving pollen from one plant to another so that the plants can reproduce. Pollination can occur via processes such as wind, water flow, and even self-pollination, but it is most often done by bugs. Butterflies, moths, and most famously bees are all pollinators. Pollination is important not just for plants, but for us too. Our lives depend on pollination, as a lot of the foods we eat are dependent on pollinators. Approximately 75% of globally important food crops are reliant on pollination in some way. Almost 50% of leading global food commodities rely on honeybee pollination alone. But it's not just food. Vital medicines and animal products are reliant on pollination too. Our way of life is not possible without pollinators. But our pollinators are in danger. The world population of bees, for example, has declined dramatically. In America alone, we saw a drop of 61% of managed honey producing colonies, from 5.9 million in 1947 to 2.3 million in 2008. Bees are under attack from all sides. The conversion of natural areas into agricultural land or urban areas has resulted in the loss of crucial pollinator habitats. There has been a reduction in suitable areas for nesting, breeding and areas with necessary nutrients, all of which increases the competition between pollinator species and population, leading to more deaths. The wild areas that remain are few and far between. Navigating such a fragmented landscape adds further pressure on pollinators. Monoculture farming also reduces pollinator biodiversity by limiting the diversity of plants available to pollinators. Pesticide usage, such as the use of neonicotinoids, is impacting pollinators directly due to the dangerously high chemical content, and indirectly by killing wildflowers surrounding agricultural fields. Pesticides are applied to attack weeds and other pests, but they can impact organisms they were not intended to, including wildflower species. Less wildflowers means less nectar, and less nectar means less pollinators, and before you know it, pesticides have disrupted an entire ecosystem. Climate change is also a driver of pollinator decline, as insects are particularly vulnerable to intense droughts. Current conservation efforts will likely not be enough to save our pollinators. To top it off, artificial light, poor nutrition, and varroa mites are all likely contributing to pollinator decline. But it's not too late to save our pollinators. There are many things we can do that will help our bees get back on their feet again. Managing which plants we grow and where we grow them can help build suitable habitats for pollinators. This is especially good when we take advantage of areas that are not being used for anything else, such as the areas of land beneath power lines or roadside lawns. Careful and informed selection and planting of flowers in urban gardens and allotments, for example, will provide corridors to support pollinator movements through otherwise uninhabitable areas. There is lots of information about how to make your garden as pollinator friendly as possible. Visit Bee Watch to find out which flowers are pollinator favourites. This isn't limited to urban areas. Linking wildflower rich habitats in our countryside by making bee lines is equally important. 
Integrated pest management can massively reduce pesticide use, thus benefiting pollinators. Exploring how to use less pesticides by applying them more efficiently or choosing less harmful alternatives can help save our pollinators. Changing what we feed pollinators, such as honeybees, can also improve overall pollinator health. For these strategies to be successful, we must monitor pollinator numbers closely. You can help by engaging in citizen science projects such as the UK Pollinator Monitoring Scheme, which has an accompanying app to facilitate monitoring. Pollinize, who provide pollinator promoting seed packets. The Garden Butterfly and Moth Surveys. Bee Fly Watch and the Bee Walk Survey Scheme. Many people are afraid of bees, especially if they have been stung. But we are doing more harm to them than they are to us, which is why it is crucial to raise awareness of the challenges that threaten our pollinators, challenges that also threaten us and to educate people, because no one can single-handedly save our pollinators. It is incredible that interactions like pollination exist in nature and these interactions need to be preserved for us and for all the plants and animals that benefit from them. Do you remember the butterfly effect? Well if a butterfly can start a tornado, just imagine what you can do by planting a few flowers in your garden.